I have always been a girl boss. Imagine the kind of ego and pride that I had as a girl boss. I never imagined that this would be my life at 31. I was always on the fast lane. But now that I'm in the soft life, slow down era, it's been beautiful. Welcome to Adulting with Joyce Spring. Watch the full video of this episode on my channel, www.youtube.com slash TV. And if you want to level up your adulting game, check out joyspring.com slash collections for my digital products and courses. What's up you guys and welcome to another episode of Adulting with Joy Spring. I'm so sorry that I was away for a while because I was living this life. I was living the soft life and producer Kiara could not drag me out of my home where I was joyfully becoming a soccer mom first and foremost, joyfully planning my second baby's first birthday and learning how to cook food other than Filipino dishes. So <laughs> I was out. I feel like maybe we didn't record for what? Three weeks, Kara? It's been three weeks, but now I am back. Um, I didn't have a Women's Month episode precisely because I was thinking to myself, wow, wala akong Women's Month episode. Sayang naman yung opportunity. But then I was like, no, but I'm living what it truly means to be a woman, which is <laughs> to do well in where God has called me as a woman, which is to become a wife and a mom in this season. So I felt like that was an even better way of living out what I believe in rather than just talking about it. I lived it out. I didn't put any pressure on myself to put out an episode when I felt like I didn't want to or didn't have to. And I was just present with my family and my children. And it was such a beautiful three weeks. But now we're back and we're talking about this particular topic because I feel like so many people are talking about it. And there are mga girlfriends who are younger than me and older than me, who are not yet married, who have been talking to me and DMing me like, Yes, girl. Yes, queen. That's the soft life. So, what do you mean by this soft life? Na to? Apparently, it's been trending on social media. And if you are on TikTok or on Instagram, you've probably seen these short videos of girls saying na I don't even want to work. I don't want the hustle. I don't want to be a boss, babe. I just want the soft life. So, ano nga ba tong soft life na to? So, producer Kiara has prepared for us a definition. Basahin natin to. Soft life is a way of living that prioritizes comfort, ease, and pleasure above other priorities. It doesn't mean one is aimless or unproductive in life. Rather, it is a conscious choice to live in a way that brings joy, contentment, and peace. And it entails having time for leisure, indulging in self-care, and minimizing unnecessary hustles. Now, this has been popularized now on social media because a lot of women, especially millennials who grew up in this hustle culture, are now realizing that, wait, I don't want this hustle culture. I don't want to constantly be working so hard to try and find purpose and meaning in life. And I was thinking about this because this is precisely what I've been going through, I feel like, in the past three years of motherhood. So just to give you a backstory, when I was pregnant with Elia, I had an idea and desire to go back to work. So I was pregnant with Elia in the middle of the pandemic. And while I was pregnant with him, I did not stop working. So I was pregnant with him the online events, um, digital events. So I did all of these great big hostings for incredible brands. And I even had, I, I had the contract to do an online show. I did an online educational show. I did an online game show and so many other things throughout the pandemic and throughout my pregnancy with Elia. And especially even after I gave birth to him, dahil my lockdowns pa rin nun sa atin, sobrang uso pa rin mga online events and things like that na nagagawa ko pa rin yung work ko the way that I used to, as busy as I was before, but I was still at home. So parang it didn't make any difference. But then, when the time came that everything started opening up and people were asking me to go back to studios, to shoot, to go back to live events, to be away from my baby. That's when things got a little bit more complicated because I had all of these opportunities to go back to work and I was having a really difficult time because I was standing to my baby. He was fully breastfed at that time. 
And I was also trying to figure out, okay, paano ko gagawin to? Like, every time I have to be out for a shoot or for an event, it usually takes up my whole day. And imagine I would get these opportunities maybe four or five times a week. So most of those times, I couldn't be with my baby anymore. And I had to make the conscious decision to start saying no to work. And I was really struggling with this because I felt like I was missing out on a lot. And I had an existential crisis. I don't think a lot of people know this about me but I had a huge existential crisis in the past three years because I didn't come from a family that was in showbiz first and foremost I didn't come from any connections and I really felt like I worked so hard to be where I was at that point in my career I felt like I was very successful I felt like I had made uh, a great a good career for myself in tv in events and even in broadcasting and i was presented with all of these opportunities and then now all of a sudden i'm missing out on them because i had a baby and that's what i to track back a little bit that's what i was afraid of when one show and i got married and he wanted to have babies na immediately i told him hindi i'm you know, we got married at 26 and I was telling him, four more years. I'll get pregnant when I'm 30 or 31. Dun na lang tayo start because I still had a lot of things that I wanted to do in my career. But somewhere in the middle of the pandemic, parang God gave me peace and prompted my heart to submit to my husband. And nakaroon ako ng personal desire then to start the family already. And that's why we tried for a baby in 2020. And praise God, diba? na bless kami ka agad ng baby. Um, but... You know, that fear came then after Eliam came and I was presented with a choice of either slowing down a little bit in my career or going full throttle again and leaving him more and, you know, g getting a yaya because at that time I didn't have a yaya, I didn't have a nanny. And it was just a really, it was a hard and an easy decision in this way. It was hard for me to start saying no to uh, opportunities and career things that I've always desired for and worked hard for in the past 11, 12 years that I've been in the industry. But it was easy in the sense that I was asking myself, who's going to raise my kid? If Wancho is pursuing his career, he was very, very successful also he had all of his shows in GMA Disha na wala ng teleserye he was shooting for movies he was doing all of the other business stuff if he's doing that and i'm also going to be super busy who's going to be left with Elian someone's got to raise our kid and i realized that that's my calling now i'm i'm his mom and my calling is to care for him and nurture him and make sacrifices so that I can be with him more often. And you can look at all of this research and you can you can have all of your opinions, but research shows that children thrive when they have their mothers, their primary attachment, a strong connection with their primary caregiver. So that's what I did. I chose the soft life. Konti, konti. Nag-struggle pa rin ako kasi parang nilalaban ko pa rin na hindi lalabas pa rin ako every so often. But then, our second baby came. Aggie came into the picture last year. And that's when I knew that it was really time for me to rearrange my priorities. Now, prior to having my baby, my mind's... I have always been a girl boss. I mean, you can look it up. If you followed me for a really long time, tama ba? Diba? Yun naman talaga yung vibes ko, diba? Girl boss ever since. Uh, I started working when I was 17. I've been taking care of myself since I was maybe six. <laughs> I've been taking care of myself since I was 17. I've been working. I bought myself my first car. No one had, no one bought me my uh, a car. Uh. Like, no one has ever bought me anything in my life. It was always me. I bought myself my first car. I bought myself my first condo when I was 23. I bought myself my first ticket out of the country. I'd never had the passport until I was 21. And then when I, tw when I was 21, I got my passport. I flew to Singapore. So I'm saying this because you can just imagine the kind of ego and pride that I had as a girl boss, quote-unquote. And I took pride, like busy was a badge of honor that I had. Busy but was a badge of honor that I carried through and through. 
And I would take pride in the fact na naho-hospitalize ako kapag January na kasi grabe sobrang busy ko throughout the Christmas season, the holiday season, just shooting and hosting events. And I took pride in the fact that I took care of myself, that I could buy whatever I wanted, that I could travel whenever I wanted. And it was a pride that I carried for a really long time until God addressed it in my heart through being a wife and being a mom. So how did God do that? For the longest time, I always thought that why would I do things if I could pay somebody else to do it? So, pagdating sa pagdesign ng bahay, I would pay somebody to design our Christmas decorations because I just could not be bothered. It didn't matter to me na bakit ako magde-design yung pwede naman ako magbayad na ibang tao to do that. One, I never cooked in my life. Like, I knew how to do that. I knew maybe like one or two dishes like I could survive, but I would always either order food out or we had to cook for the longest time. But then God humbled me. <laughs> Umalis yung cook namin for two years. And then parang nagkaroon lang ako ng, binigyan ako ni Lord ng conviction talaga to slow down and be more present. So what were the things that I learned? One, that these Becoming a homemaker was not something that I saw myself becoming because I always, I've always been a breadwinner. And I always thought that that was going to be my life, that I was going to be a breadwinner forever first and then a mom and a wife second. But then God was showing me slowly and transforming my heart and showing that my family needed me more than my work that I was more replaceable at work than I was in my family, that anybody could do what I'm doing. There are a lot of talented hosts and broadcasters out there who could easily take my opportunities, and they did. You know, there were so many other people who, when I didn't want to fly out for an international show, when I didn't want to do uh, shooting for like 14, 16 hours, somebody else did, and I was replaced. And I realized that it is only in my journey as a wife and a mom that I could be irreplaceable. No one could be a wife to Wancho except for me. No one could be a mom to Aggie and Eliam except for me. And I realized that it was such a beautiful calling to be able to show up for my family and choose them and say yes to them instead of thinking that I'm saying no to work opportunities. Then I saw the merit in all the seemingly unimportant everyday tasks of a home maker and a wife. For example, with decorations. I started to buy fresh flowers for our home and started decorating our house. And I've realized that all my life, pala, I looked at the house as just a functional thing. It's a place where you sleep, where you eat, where you rest. But that's it. But when I started to become more in tuned in the soft life, I realized ko na decorating pala the home, making it beautiful for my family, was creating a culture in my family that, oh, when it's Christmas season, mom puts up, mama puts up the decorations. When it's Monday, mama takes us to the groceries and we do the groceries and we buy fresh flowers so that the house will smell like stargazers. So decorations were... It wasn't just like, oh, pampaganda lang yan ng bahay. No, it's something that adds joy to our family culture. That's one. Second, when our cook of almost three years left us to be back with her family, I kid you not, I spent one entire week ordering food every single day for me and my two children, which cost me around 5,000 pesos per day. As in every day from breakfast to dinner, I order lang ako ng food. At that time, I was reading Atomic Habits, and one of the principles there was one percent better every day. So I ko, sabi ko, I may not cook all of the meals of my children and of my family, but I'll just try to do lunch. Yun lang. Sige, I can order breakfast, I can order dinner, pero I'll try to cook lunch and follow a simple recipe on YouTube. And by God's grace, ngayon, I can cook so many other things and I'm actually enjoying my time in the kitchen. And I realized na a lot of women have these negative connotations about homemakers or the wife being at home and making, like you belong in the kitchen as like a parang an insult to women. It takes so much brain work. You have to be so in tuned and intentional to actually 
alam mo, naisip, na hit na, try nyo na ba yung naiisipin mo kung anong papakain mo sa mga tao every single day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks? It's crazy. It's a lot of work. And a lot of people think that it's useless to do that, na parang degrading siya somehow. But when I started doing it, I felt elevated. I felt even more important because now I could see that the food that my children are eating, the food that my husband is eating, is directly affecting their mood. It's directly affecting their health. It's directly affecting their disposition. And it just reminded me that everything unto the Lord is worship. Everything that we do unto the Lord should be worship unto the Lord. Diba? Everything that we do should be worship unto the Lord. And I say that because as somebody who thought that there was only one way of doing things, like, hindi, it's either you're 100% a career woman or either a 100% a homemaker. You can never be a little bit of both. I felt like I was stuck. Like, I could never, I could never actually be 100% a career, a, a, a homemaker. But I realized that there's really blessing in answering the call to where God is leading you. So that's the very long introduction as how as to how I got into the soft life. And it's still a process. Like to this day, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still working, obviously. I'm still here. But I think what it means to be choosing and living the soft life is that I've removed the pressure of constantly hustling and constantly being at the top of my game away from my shoulders. Like, that's no longer a weight I carry. I now understand that in this particular season of my life, my priority is to stay at home, to take care of my children, to make sure that I'm able to help and love my husband and that this is just a season where my children need me most. Now, does that mean that I'll never be back, that I'll never have the opportunities again to work and to pursue something else in the future? Probably not, right? Like maybe if that's something that that I will have a desire for again in the future, who am I to say na hindi na ako magiging successful? Maybe... 20, 15 years down the road where I want to pursue something and my children don't need me as much anymore. But right now, kailangan na kailangan nila ako. And the soft life is what will help them flourish the most at this point. So I I say all of these things as somebody who is still learning. Ah. I'm, I'm still embracing. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to embrace it. But I see the merit now. I see the beauty in it now. And by God's grace, nag soften na yung heart ko that I actually enjoy it now. And even though there are mga challenges and there are a lot of things that I feel like I still need to surrender to God, nahikita ko na na it's such a beautiful calling to be where I am right now. And it's such a privilege to be living the soft life because I know that not a lot of women can do that because of their particular circumstances. And I'm not saying that this is the only way to live, but what I'm trying to say is, it is one beautiful way to live if you ever consider it. And if if you ever look at it like I did before, na parang, ah, oh, that's so boring. It's so boring to just live in the suburbs and then take care of your family. I was like that before. But when you're when you're in it, and when you see how God uses even the simplest experiences and the day-to-day simplicities to prune you, to care for you, to show you His glory and His beauty, you transform ka talaga. And it's, such, it's been such an amazing, amazing experience for me. Ang dami ko nang sinabi. Wala naman ako sinagod na question. Okay. So there, I've... I've also been taking videos of myself cooking, pero hindi ko pa na-upload kasi parang sobrang wala akong alam. Baka may magsabi na, oh, di dapat ganyan yung pag-sote. <laughs> but I, I, I'm so passionate about this topic because I feel like I have such a, 
a special perspective on it. Kasi never ako naging soft life girly before. As in girl boss girly ako, diba? So parang, ang ganda kasi nakaharoon ako ng transitionary phase that I'd love to share with you guys. So if you want to hear more about it, please do let it let me know because I feel like I have a lot of insight to share. I was thinking, ah, eh, parang from girl boss to homemaker, it's such a it's such an incredible experience that I've been having so far. It's difficult. There are challenges, but I'm learning so much. And at turning, I'm turning 31 this year. I never imagined that this would be my life at 31 because I always, I was always on the fast lane. But now that I'm in the soft life and the slow down era, it's been beautiful. So as I end this episode, I wanted to share with you uh, a couple of books that I've read in the past few months that I feel like could be helpful to you. Um, one is Emma's for Mama. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know that I've read this book, Emma's for Mama, Let Me Be a Woman by Elizabeth Elliot. Um, and also Risen Motherhood is very good as well. And finally, the one that I've read recently, which really, which really solidified my position on the soft life is The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Beautiful book. So I'm going to leave you with that. And if you want to hear more of this journey, please do let me know on my Instagram and on the podcast. And we'll see you on the next one. That's it, you guys. Paalam. That's it for this episode of Adulting with Joy Spring. If you liked this podcast, please don't forget to use the hashtag Adulting with Joy Spring and also check out www.joyspring.com for the show notes and tag me on social media, whether you know it, at Joy Spring. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Paalam!